Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 to 3. I'll read, and it says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he would... You should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Mm -hmm. So just before the thousand year reign of Christ begins, an angel will descend from heaven with the key of the bottomless pit and with a great chain. So he proceeds to seize, to seize the dragon with the devil and Satan and bind him with great chain. The angel house, uh, you will, uh, you know, you will take the devil, bind him into prison, which is the bottomless pit, and lock the prison, putting a seal upon the door of the prison. So the reason of Satan's confinement in the bottomless pit is that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years are expired until a thousand years have expired. So the pit that you should uh, uh, be thrown into is the one that we have been seeing all in the past other chapters 14, 13, talking about this pit. So the nations that Satan shall be barred from deceiving are actually the Gentile nations. I want you to make sure you, you, you get hold of that. The nations, that Satan shall be barred from deceiving are the Gentile nations um, that shall be in the millennium and that uh, shall through the process of uh, natural reproduction rapidly begin to multiply in it. So Gentile nations shall enter into the millennium as the sheep, um, as the, uh, 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 the sheep uh, people after the judgment of the nations of the coming of Christ. Can someone read me Matthew? Matthew 25. Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. Matthew chapter 25. So the term, remember the term millennium describes the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. The thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. It is derived from two Latin words, mil, Mili, that's M-I-L-L-E, uh, which means a thousand. And Anam, A-N-N-U-M, which means year. So millennium simply means a thousand years. So there's no reason to think that uh, these 1,000 years are merely symbolic. Rather, they are literal years, as is abundantly proved in the um, six instances the phrase thousand years is used in the book of Revelation, uh, especially from chapter one to seven of Revelation. Is someone ready to read uh, Matthew 25? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Matthew 25, 41. Then he will say to those on, the, on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels for i was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat i was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink i was a stranger and you did not invite me in i needed clothes and you did not clothe me i was sick and in prison and you did not look after me they will they, they also will answer lord when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment by the righteous to eternal life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, after a thousand years are up, Satan shall be loosed for a little season, okay? 
Uh, now, since the devil has been aided by his demons in his work of deception, they too shall be placed in confinement. We read that we read that in Revelations 18, verse 2, that Babylon at its utter destruction shall become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bed. That's in Isaiah, um, in Isaiah chapter um, um, 24, I think this is 21 to 22. It also talks about uh, that it shall that day shall come to pass when the Lord shall punish the worst of high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth and they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison and after many days they shall be visited Isaiah chapter 24 this is 21 to 22 so the worst of the high ones that are on high are certain evil angels they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered and shall be shut up in prisons in the pit and after many days they shall be visited or set loose we have already been informed by john in revelation 20 verse 3 uh that uh after a thousand years are expired satan must be loosed a little for a little season right that's on verse 20 on chapter 20 verse 3. verse 4 says i saw thrones and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of christ and for the word of god and which had not worshipped the beast neither his image had received his mark upon their foreheads or in the hands they lived and reigned with christ a thousand years someone read me in another version nlt or niv version uh verse 4 of chapter 20. quickly 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 can someone read that one to me chapter 20 verse 4. Revelations chapter 20, verse 4 in NIV says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge, and I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of, because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. Uh, go ahead. Uh, oh, okay. Um, and um, because of the word of God, they had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their forehead or their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yes. So after Satan and his angels are shut up in their prison, John sees thrones and the saints of God most high sit upon them and judgment is given unto them. This is exactly what Daniel saw. Remember in his first vision in Daniel chapter seven, verse nine and verse 10, and also verse 26 to 27, where he was talking that he watched the thrones in, uh, put in place and ancient, day, ancient of days, meaning God was seated and his garment was white as snow. His head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame. If you remember, uh, and he was talking about the wheels were a burning fire. There were fiery streams issued that came forth before him. So, and, and then he reiterated twice. He says a thousand, a thousand ministered to him. 10,000 times, 10,000 stood before God. The court was seated and the books were opened, but the court shall be seated and they shall take away dominion to consume and destroy it forever. Then the kingdom and dominion and the, and the greatness of the kingdoms um, under the whole heaven shall be given to, to the people. So the saints of the most high, his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall save and obey God, right? So we see Revelation chapter 2, verse 26 to 27, 
it also talks how the saints of God shall sit upon thrones and reign with Christ forever and ever. They are reigning beginning after the establishment of Christ's reign on earth. So Christ has already promised that those who overcome and keep his work unto the end will sit on thrones and reign with him. Revelation chapter 2, verses 26 to 27. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. Remember, we have heard and have learned about this already. So the tribulation martyrs which were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had the, those people had not worshipped, they refused to worship the beast, and they are going to be killed, and some were already killed for refusing to worship the beast. Neither his image, neither had they received the 666 number on their foreheads, nor in their hands shall live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. So these are the people who are going to reign with Christ. They shall be resurrected in immortal bodies, and they shall reign with Christ during his thousand year reign and during eternity. So the earth shall be the sphere of his rule. That's the tribulation saints, as well as the Old Testament saints shall reign with Christ during his thousand year reign. So church saints, we will also reign together with Christ. We, the church today, the ecclesia, we are also going to reign with Christ during a thousand years. Um, first Corinthians, one, uh, someone look for First Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. I, 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 like, I like it. It talks about uh, that the saints are going to judge the world and that we are going to judge angels. I love this scripture. Uh, is someone there? Uh, can someone also find 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12? If someone find first, found 1 first Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 to 5, please read it for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 to 5. Yes. If any of you has a dispute with another, do you dare to take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the Lord's people? Or do you not know that the Lord's people will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, you are not competent to judge trivial cases. Do you not know that we will judge angels? How yes. much more the things of life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, do, do you ask for a ruling from those whose way of life is called in the church? I say this shame to you. Is it possible that there is nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute? between believers but instead one brother takes another to court and this is i think we go and this in front of unbelievers that's very, what i just wanted one to five oh, one. so who is on two team of the two twelve uh, two, two, two timothy two timothy two, chapter two verse twelve yes verse twelve if we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Someone open Revelations 2, verse 26 to 27. Revelations 2, verse 26 to 27. I really love, 2 Timothy is very sh short. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us, period. <laughs> right? Very short and sweet. Uh, someone read um, um, Revelations 2, verse 26 and 27. And he and, who of, oh, go ahead. Oh, thank you. And he that overcometh and, the, and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Yes. And he shall rule, with, rule them with the rod of iron as the vessels of a powder shall they be broken to shivers, mm -hmm. as I received of my father. Mm -hmm. Right. Someone read Revelation 5, verse 9 to 10. Someone go to Revelation 22, verses 3 to 5. Revelation 5, verse 9 to 10. Mm -hmm. 
and they sung, sorry, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou are worthy to take the book and to open the, the seal thereof, for thou was slain and 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 has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on on the earth. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And to he has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth with Christ. Amen. Who is on Revelations 22, verses 3 to 5? Who is on Revelations 22? Uh, Revelations 22, verse 3 to 5. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. There shall be no night day, and they, oh, sorry, there shall be no night day. They need no lamp, no light of the sun, for the Lord God gives them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. So it is the heritage of all God's saints to reign with Christ. It's our inheritance. It's our heritage. So we'll begin to reign with him in the millennium and we will reign with him in the new earth and in eternity. Revelation 20 verse 5, it says, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years we're finished. So this is the first resurrection that will take place. So the rest of the dead shall not be resurrected until after the end of a thousand years. So these constitute all the wicked dead from Adam to the end of the millennium. So the resurrection of the righteous will okay before the millennium. And the resurrection of the wicked will okay after the millennium. Okay, I hope you got that. This is key. Next week when I ask you, I want you to tell me. I said, I hope you are paying attention. I referred to the scripture in Revelation 20, verse 5, right? And then I, it talks about how the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. And I said, this is the what? This is what we call the first resurrection. So the rest of the dead shall not be resurrected until after the end of the thousand years, the millennium, right? So these people who will be resurrected after the end of the uh, thousand years, they constitute of all the wicked dead from the time of Adam to the end of the millennium. So the resurrection of the righteous will occur before the millennium and the resurrection of the wicked people, it will happen after the millennium. So the pre-millennial resurrection of the righteous is called the first resurrection. While the post-millennial resurrection of the wicked is called the second resurrection. So the first resurrection is not a single event, okay? So it describes the resurrection of the righteous at various times. That includes, number one, I want you to, to write this down. Number one, the resurrection of Christ. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23. Number two, the resurrection of the many bodies of Old Testament that were seen walking in Jerusalem after the resurrection of Christ. Remember in Matthew 27, 
verses 50 to 53. These people were seen walking life. The dead people were seen walking life in Jerusalem. This is the Old Testament. Number three, the resurrection of those who are in Christ, who are Christ's, they belong to Christ when he raptures the church, right? That's in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. Number four, the resurrection of the two witnesses. Remember, the two witnesses, we've learned about them in the past. So these two witnesses whose bodies will lie in the streets when they are killed. Remember, Revelation chapter 11, 11, we talked about these two witnesses. The, remember, there's going to be the resurrection of these two witnesses. Then number five, the resurrection of the tribulation saints who are described here in the book of Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. I want someone to find Daniel chapter 12, verse 2a, part a. That's the one I need. So in other words, the first resurrection includes the resurrection of Christ and of all true believers, though they are raised at different times. So it occurs in several stages. Are you understanding these different resurrection times? Uh, Pastor, is this a way to get more uh, believers of Christ to go to heaven? What? Is this a way to get more believers to go to heaven? Oh, no, 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 no. Um, the rapture will have already taken place, and those who are going to remain in the tribulation will go through the tribulation, and a lot is going to happen. If you listen to the tapes from before, they will give you a picture of all these people I'm talking about, the groups of people who are going to resurrect. We have already talked, learned about the true witnesses. We've learned about uh, the um, people who are not going to go with rapture, uh, that they're going to go through trials and tribulations. And if they ever make it, those are the ones who entered with their own blood. These are the ones we are talking about. And then those who died in the past. So these are already believers. They are already believers. It's the ruling of Christ, the coming to the culmination of what the Bible is all about. We are closing down what is going to happen finally on the earth. This is what's going to happen finally. This is where we are going. That's why we are Christians. That's why we pray. That's why we walk righteously. That's why we do what we do. This is the culmination of what is going to happen on this earth at the end of life. Did you get that, Theo? Yes, Pastor. Thank you. Okay. You need to go and listen to all those tips from chapter one of Revelation. It will help you. Okay. So, uh, did someone get the scripture I wanted? What was that? Um, I wanted Daniel 12 2 a. Who is it? And who is Revelation 20, verse 6? Nobody has Daniel chapter 12. Who has Revelation 20, verse 6? Yes, I have then uh, Revelation 20, verse 6. You have Daniel, Revelation 26? Yes, Father. What? Meanwhile, she's reading. Tonde, can you find me Daniel 12, verse 2? Go ahead, Sister Priscilla. Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that had part, as part in the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. On such the second that had so powerful, but they, they shall be priests of God and of mm -hmm. Christ and mm -hmm. shall reign with mm -hmm. him a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Amen. Oh, yeah, thank you. You see, what, 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 what John is talking about, he's saying we have an advantage. Christians in this season, Christians in this season in the kingdom, we have an advantage. We are actually blessed. The scripture says, uh, blessed and holy is he that is part in the first resurrection on such the second death is no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So that means if you walk right, if you do the right thing and rapture, rapture comes, boom, you are gone. And when the Christ, when Christ come for the second coming, 
Remember, we're talking of the coming of Christ, three different types of the coming of Christ. The first one, he has already come to this earth. The second one is going to be suspended in the air. And the, the, the third one, the actual final one, the culmination, what they call the second advent, which is the key one, is going to touch down on earth. That's during the millennium. Okay? Anyone found Daniel 2? Of 2? Yes, I, I did. Uh, Daniel 12, verse 2. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So that's what's going to happen. So those that take part in the first resurrection are pronounced blessed and holy. So the second death is no power over them, but they will reign with Christ as priests of God and of Christ for a thousand years. What is implied, like I'm saying in other words, is that the second death will have power over all the wicked dead resurrected in, the, in their bodies in the second resurrection. Do you understand what I'm saying? All the wicked dead resurrected in their bodies, they are the ones that shall face death, second death. They will face the second death. So the resurrection, the wicked dead shall die again. Their death being described as eternal punishment in the lake of fire. So from today, don't listen to those people who tell you that there is no hell, who tell you that there's never going to be people who are going to the pit of hell. As long as you are a Bible student, go to Revelation 20, verse 15, talking about how these people uh, who will not have been raptured and they continue in their sin, they will be thrown into the lake of fire. Matthew 25, verse 41. Matthew 25, verse 46. Mark chapter 9, verse 43 to 48. So no session of souls or total annihilation is taught in the scriptures or elsewhere, right? So the resurrection of the tribulation saints shall okay, not at the beginning of the millennium, but at some point in time, just before the second advent of Christ. So we know this to be so because we see them during uh, standing before the throne of God in heaven before the tribulation is ended. I want you to pay attention. I'm going to come back and ask questions uh, of the resurrections I talked about. So Revelation 7, verse 9 to 17, it talks about the 144,000 Jewish servants. Remember, I talked about the 144,000? So the 144,000 Jewish servants of God of Revelations chapter 7, verses 1 to 8, are also seen in the company of the Lamb on Mount Zion in heaven. We saw that in Revelation 14, verses 1 to 5. So the time is before the second advent of the Lamb, just before the hour of judgment and the destruction of Babylon. So the hour of judgment is also the time of the destruction of Babylon and the time of the war of Armageddon. Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 to 20. So Babylon is going to be destroyed at the outpouring of the seventh bow of judgment. And during this time, the war of Armageddon will be in progress. So nations will have gathered at Armageddon, right? During the outpouring of the sixth power, Revelation 16, this is 12 to 21. So therefore the, the ascension to heaven of the 144,000 will take place after the sounding of the seventh trumpet. But before the destruction of Babylon and the war of Armageddon, we should keep in mind that the substance of the seventh trumpet comprom comprises the seven bowel judgments of Revelation 16. Are we on the same page? Is this uh, making some sense to someone? Can I see people saying yes? Can you show me a sign? Put, raise your hand. Uh, put something to show me 
you are here with us. You are still in the class. Yes, Piola, there, Betsy, there. Marion, she's here. Yevedzo, okay, I get you. MQ is still here. Now she's still here. Can I have people showing me? Are you here with me? Can I see uh, some reactions, guys? Yes, Farish is here. Dave is here. Who else is here? We, IV, she's here. I am here. Who is that, Betsy? You are here. Tim, you are here. Oh, Who else? Oh, Nefesh, she's here. Good. Yeah. Evans, where are you? And who else didn't respond? My Evans, can you look for your husband and I'm tell here. him, Pastor said you can't be cooking, going everywhere. We need to see him here. <laughs> I am here, Pastor. I'm listening. Oh, thank you. So the tribulation saints will be resurrected, right? Before the tribulation. I'm going to go back. I know, um, what's your name? Uh, Yevedzo, you are asking about the 144,000, right? Remember, 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 in Revelation chapter 7, we talked about the 144,000 Jewish servants. Remember, if you remember, I said the 144,000 is not us, the Gentiles is the Jews, is the Jewish people, right? You remember that, right? So it is this 144,000 Jewish servants of God of Revelation chapter seven. They are going to be seen in the company of the Lamb on Mount Zion in heaven, right? In Revelation 14, this is one to five, it talks about that. So the time is before the second advent of the Lamb right? What I'm saying is that it is going to happen just before the hour of judgment and the destruction of Babylon. Remember, we talked about Babylon, how it is going to be destroyed, right? So the hour of judgment is also the time of the destruction of, of Babylon and the time of the war of Armageddon. It's going to happen almost like collide. Revelation chapter 14, remember verse 6 to 20. So the ascension to heaven of the, they will eventually ascend. The 144,000 will take place after the sounding. Remember of the trumpet, that's in chapter 16. The sounding of the seventh trumpet. And then that's when the destruction of um, Babylon and the war of Armageddon will take place. Right? Does that make sense to you now, Yevedo? Does it? Good, good, okay. So I wanted to just go ahead and talk about the, um, you know, one thing I wanted to do is to reiterate that before the millennial reign of Christ begins, there's a brief transitional period of 45 days, remember, interposed between the second advent of Christ and the commencement of his thousand reign. I talked about that last week. So in that intermediate period after the beast with the Antichrist and the false prophet are cast into the, lake of fire, uh, into the lake of fire and after the devil is imprisoned in the bottomless pit and his demons are imprisoned at a maximum prison in Babylon, two important events, mark them, are going to take place. Two important events are going to take place. Number one, the first event is that the Jews in diaspora shall be gathered into the land of Israel from all over the world. Matthew 24, verse 31, right? So the elect mentioned here in Matthew 24 are not the saints as the saints, but Israel or the saints from Old Testament. Saints are the elect of God, but so is Israel, okay? So Isaiah 45, verse 4, it talks about Jacob saying that Jacob, my servant, my, uh, for Jacob, uh, my servant, sick, and Israel, mine elect, I have, I have called uh, them by my name. I have surnamed them, uh, though they have not really known me. 
is God speaking. And then Paul also says that although Israel is presently at uh, logite or enemy, this enmity between Israel and God with the gospel yet, yet this same Israel, according to God's election, is the beloved for the Father's sake. So no matter what, Israel is loved by God, guys. I, inter, I, I reiterate what I said to you last week that we must continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to continue to pray for Israel. Romans 11 verse 28, it says, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. That Israel shall be regathered from all over the world is mentioned in Isaiah 11, verse 11 to 12. It talks about how they will come together the second time to recover the remnant of his people. We shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Patros and from Cush, which is Africa, and from Elam and China and from Hamath and, the, and from the islands of the sea. He shall set up an ensign for the nations, and they shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the, the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. We, 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 we need to, when we get time, uh, you need to read that one, Isaiah chapter 11, verses 11 to 12. So notice in the above verse, God will cover the remnants of his people, Israel, for the second time. So the first time was when God brought them back to, uh, to Judah from the Babylonian captivity. That lasted 70 years. Now at the second advent of Christ, you will recover them uh, the second time from a worldwide dispersion. Um, and then some prominent places are named in Isaiah from where the Jews shall be recovered. I spoke about Assyria. You need to mark these names, okay, guys? There are Jews there. There are Jews in those places. And the more Jews shall go into those lands. Assyria is one of them, which is northern Iraq. Egypt, which is lower part of Egypt. Patros, which is upper part of Egypt. Kush, that's Africa. Elam, that's Iran. China, that's southern Iraq. And Hamath is Syria. So the islands, I want you to mark those nations. So the islands of the sea include such places as the British, the British Ice Isles, so and the American Isles and the Australis, Australians and Japan, they will become the islands of the sea that shall also have a lot of Jews. Again, Isaiah tells us of the worldwide gathering of the Jews, with many of them coming, especially from uh, China. From China. Um, I, I read an article yesterday. If people have time, this is for your homework. Go and see right now what the Chinese are doing with the Israelites, with the Jews. Go and find out. Read, I read an article yesterday. I was like, wow, you know, the scriptures are being fulfilled right before our eyes. Go and um, uh, look at them, uh, find out what's happening between the Chinese people the Palestinians, the Syrians, and the, and the Jews. So anyway, Isaiah 49 verse 12, it says, Behold, the Jews shall come from far, and lo, this from north and from west, and this from the land of Sinim. So directions in prophecy are given from the standpoint of Israel. The land of Sinim is China, right? When you see in the scriptures, the Bible talks about the land of Sinim, it's talking about China, which is the, in the far east, okay? So the Jews shall be gathered from the four corners of the earth. So when Israel returns to your land at the beginning of the millennium, God will prepare the way for her. So the Gulf of Suez that links the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea shall be dried up and the Israelites shall cross over on dry ground from Egypt and Africa back to Israel. So the seven streams of the Nile that enter into the Mediterranean Sea shall also be dried up and the children of Israel shall walk over 
on dry ground. That's the second miracle, the parting of the Red Sea that God is going to perform naturally. So Isaiah chapter 11, verse 15 to 16, it talks about um, how um, the Lord shall destroy the tongue of the Egyptians, um, Gulf of Suez, and with his mighty wind, you will shake with his hand the river, the Nile, meaning the Nile River, and you will smite in the seven streams and make men go over dry shod, and they shall be highway for the remnant of his people. We shall be left from Assyria and North Iraq, which is called Kudastan, I think Kuzastan, Kuzakstan, or something like, like that. So I'm not sure. It should be Kazakhstan. Like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. This was prophesied by Isaiah in chapter 27, verses 12 to 13, when he talked about how the day shall come to pass, and the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the rivers unto the stream of Egypt. He shall gather them one by one, saying, My children of Israel, come, and it shall come to pass that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were those who were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt. They shall worship the Lord in the holy mountain back at Jerusalem. We also see this in Isaiah 56, verse 8, which the Lord is going to gather the outcasts of Israel. They will be gathered back to Jerusalem. We also see this was prophesied in Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 to 22, that the drying of the waters of Suez Canal and the Nile Delta will be reminiscent the first Exodus when Israel crossed the Red Sea on dry land. So the judgment on Israel shall occur in the valley of Azal outside Israel. So the rebels among them will not come into Israel. Israel shall be saved and the nation born again in one day. This is fulfilling the Old Testament feast of the day of atonement, Levit Leviticus chapter 16. So Israel shall be blessed and shall be the head of the nations in the millennium. So Israel is going to become the head of nations in the millennium. That's very important that I want you to note. So the second important event shall be that of the judgment of living nations, which we have already touched on, right? Judgment of living nations. Um, I said 45 days will be the transitional period from the second advent of Christ and the commencement of the millennium. So where do I get this uh, 45 days? Daniel chapter 12, Daniel chapter 12, verses 11 to 12. Can someone get that one? Daniel chapter 12, verses 11 to 12. Let's find someone to read that for us. Oh, sorry, I was actually there. Uh, it says, um, and from that time, the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination of desolation is set up there shall be 1,290 days. Blessed is he who waits and comes to the 1,335 days. Okay. So you see, according to Daniel, the last three and a half years of the tribulation, I, I did this with you. I calculated this with you in the past. It shall be 1,290 days. Okay. Then the one who will wait and come to 1,335 days shall be blessed, okay? Ye shall be blessed in that ye shall be granted a visa into the millennium. So the waiting shall be a vetting period in which the Israelites and the living nations shall be vetted before being granted the formal approval of entry into the millennial kingdom of Christ. Then the millennium will then com commence. So the form of the government of the millennium shall be called a theocracy. It will be a theocracy. What we know is we know democracy. 
we know socialism, we know communism and all those things, but the form of this kind of government, the millennium government, it shall be called a theocracy, meaning that Jesus Christ shall be reigning on earth as king of kings and lord of lords, according to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7, and the government. Someone find me Isaiah 9, verse 6 to 7. And uh, we will read when we get chance. I want you to read Isaiah 42, verses 1 to 6. Read Ezekiel 43, verse 7. Daniel 9, verses 13 to 14. Zachariah 6, verses 12 to 13. Zachariah 14, verse 19. Luke chapter 1, verses 31 to 33. Can some for me, I love Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7. Isaiah 9, verse 6 to 7. For, for, us, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be on his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, in peace there shall be no end the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order and to establish it with judgment and with, the ju and with the justice from hence forth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Amen. Amen. The government shall be upon his shoulders. So ye shall rule with a rod of iron, severely putting down all rebellion. Psalm chapter 2 verse 7 to 12. It actually talks about that. Isaiah 11, verse 4, Revelation 12, verse 5, and Revelation 19, verse 15. Yet ye shall judge righteously and uphold faithfulness without partiality. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 3 to 5. So Christ shall stand as a signal for the people. There shall be a banner of salvation to all nations so the nations shall inquire and seek knowledge from him and his dwelling shall be glorious uh, isaiah 11 verse 10 john 12 verse 32 so christ shall be sought after by the gentiles and to those who seek him he shall provide a glorious rest isaiah 11 verse 10 jerusalem shall be the millennium this is important. Jerusalem shall be the millennial capital of the millennial earth. Isaiah 2 verse 3. This is important. This is important. I'll ask that question. This is important. Okay. Jerusalem shall be the millennial capital of the millennial earth. So it's important that you remember that. It is key and very, very important. Okay, guys? Mm -hmm. There shall be tremendous changes in the animal kingdom. Wild beasts shall be tamed. Wolves and lambs shall dwell together. Lepers, you see, I want you to listen to this. This is what um, Jehovah's Witness people, they use this scripture. They, 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 they what do you call it? If they speak heres about this scripture. When they come to you, you need to know what this scripture means because they use it to twist your brain. Okay. So this is found in Isaiah 11, verse 6 to 9, Isaiah 65, 25, Hosea 2, verse 18. It talks about how the animal kingdom, uh, there are going to be changes in the animal kingdom. You know, it says wild beasts will be tamed, wolves will be tamed, lamp and wolves will, will dwell together. Leopards and kids, they will lie down together. Domestic animals with the herbivorous will graze together with lions and other carnivorous animals. You see? So they will eat grass together. Little children will lead lions, elephants, leopards, wolves and hyenas, sucking children and those that are weaned who put their heads in walls inhabited by poisonous snakes and they will not be harmed. However, the curse upon the serpent 
shall remain in force and it will continue to eat dust and strike the heel of man. So there will also be great geographically and um, topographical changes on earth. Desert places shall be turned into fruitful places. Waters and streams shall flow in the deserts, making them blossom like a rose. Isaiah 35, verses 1 to 10. And from under the threshold of the millennial temple, eastward, a river shall flow. You know, if you listen to what I'm saying, we are calling it back to Eden. I've talked about back to Eden in part. This teaching right now in, in Revelation, pay attention to it because it's back to Eden. So it says that the rivers shall flow and shall turn southward and come to the city of Jerusalem. So in Jerusalem, the river shall part into two streams. One stream shall flow into the former sea. That is the sea, the dead sea. And the other stream shall flow into the Hinder Sea. That is the Mediterranean Sea, also called the Great Sea. In Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 1 to 12, in Zechariah 14, verse 8. So the stream that goes into the Dead Sea shall heal the waters of the Dead Sea so that it shall come, shall become a sea of fresh water with fish and all those things. Ezekiel 47, verse 8. Fruit bearing trees shall grow on either side of the river. The leaves of the trees shall provide healing for the people of the millennium. Ezekiel 47, verses 7 and 12. So the millennium shall be um, the golden age of peace. That's important. Take note of that. The millennium, I said, it shall become the golden age of peace as nations shall turn their swords into the plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks and shall learn war no more. It means there's not going to be war. I am going to ask someone to read Isaiah 2 verse 4. Someone uh, read uh, Isaiah 11 verse 9. Great highways shall link near and distant places of the earth. Someone find um, Isaiah 11 verse 16. So the earth shall have abundant blessings. Isaiah 9, verse 20, 29, verse 17. Who are going to read the, all these scriptures? Who is reading Isaiah 2, verse 4? Just shout your name. If you are going to read Isaiah 2, 4, say yes, I'll read. I'll read it. Thank you, Osa. Who is reading Isaiah 11, verse 9? I'll read it. Yes, thank you. Who is going to read um, Isaiah 11, verse 16? Come on, wake up, wake up, class. Uh, I can do it. I can do it. Okay, Tonde. Who's going to read Isaiah 19, verse 23 to 25? I'll read it. Theo, who's going to read um, Isaiah 29, verse 17? I can read it. Evans, who's going to read Amos 8, verse 13? Amos 8, verse 13. Wake up, wake up, don't sleep. Come on, come on, ladies, where are you? Let's read the Bible. I can read it. Ivy, who's going to read for me is Nickel 34, verse 26. I think everyone is going to find the scripture. You better say yes in time. Because I'm going to read all of the to read. Piola, you're making noise. <laughs> Who's going to read another one? Okay, my man Jengwa, you are going to read that one. Right? Ezekiel 34, 26. Shepard, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel 47, verse 1 to 12. MQ, Zachariah 14, verse 8. Uh, who else is online here? Who is not here? Nefesh, you can read, right? 
He read for me Isaiah 35, verse 8 to 10. Okay, let me hear people reading now. Let's start with, with number one. Yes, Isaiah. Pastor, can you repeat mine? Sorry. Isaiah what? Uh, Isaiah 35, verse 8 to 10. Okay. Okay, Isaiah 2, verse 4 reads, He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many people. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Who is next? I, I gave you scriptures. You're going to read. I'm tired of talking. I'm hoping you, you wrote down your verses. Uh, Isaiah 11, verse 6. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yes, and the little child who lead them. Do we have to read it in order, Pastor? Okay, Zachari Zachariah 14, verse 8. On that day, living water will flow out of Jerusalem, half of it east to the Dead Sea, and half of it west to the Mediterranean Sea, in summer and in winter. Hmm. Nefesh. Thank you, MQ. Nefesh, go ahead. Okay. All right, sorry. Okay, Isaiah 35, verse 8 to 10. And on higher shall be there, and a high, and it shall be called the way of holiness. And the clean, the unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those that have faith men that that falls, falls shall not err therein. No land shall be there, no any burners be shall go up there on it shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there and the reason of the lord shall return and come to zero with songs and everlasting joy upon their hands they shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and singing shall flew away thank you mr Chinze. After Mr. Chinze, my come in. After my Thank you, you come in. Thank you, Pastor. I'm going to read from uh I cannot find my browser here. CV one second. Isaiah 29, verse 17. That's the one you okay, gave me right now. Let's be ready. Let's be ready with our verses. Because of our time, guys, okay? Everybody be ready. Yes. Okay. Isaiah 29, verse 17 says, In a very short time, will not Lebanon, Lebanon be turned into a fatal field? And the fatal field seem like a forest. Should I continue? Yeah, next to this. Maji? Yes, the next one. In that day, the deaf will hear the words of this crow, and out of gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. Amen. Once more, the humble will rejoice in thy. Mati? That's it, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Theo? Right. Isaiah 19, verse 23 to 25. And that day there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria, and the Assyrian will come into Egypt and the, into Assyria, and the Egyptians will serve with the Assyrians. Verse 25, 20, 24. That day Israel will be once of three. 
with Egypt and Assyria, a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of the of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed is Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, my inheritance. Mm -hmm. Ivy, then shepherd. Ivy, where are you? Maya, are you ready? Um, yes, Pastor. Right. So Ezekiel 34, verse 26. I will bless my people and their homes around my holy hill. And in the proper season, I will send the showers they need. There will be showers of blessings. Amen. Amen. Uh, Shepard. Um, uh, thank you, Pastor. So, uh, was that Ezekiel um, 47, verses 1 to 12? Yes, Pastor. Uh, I'm sorry. Was it not Ezekiel 34 that I gave you? Oh, yeah, yours is 47, 1 to 12. Okay. Um, so, verse 1. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming from uh, coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside of the outer gate, facing east. And the water was trickling down, was trickling from the south side. Verse three. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. Verse five, he measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that, one could, that no one could cross. Verse six, he asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows towards the Eastern region and goes down into Araba, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Verse nine, swarms of living creatures will live wherever the, the river flows. There'll be large numbers of fish because this water flows from there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Verse 10, fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to En Eglame. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. Verse 11, but the swamps and the marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. And verse 12, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So this is the blessing that shall be restored to the earth. The earth shall be healed one more time. We shall be back to Jerusalem. We shall be back in Eden one more time. I want to end here tonight and um, ask if you have a question, if you have a comment, if you have a revelation, let's hear it. Tonde. Uh, thank you, Pastor. So, so I, I think one thing interesting that I found out before we, we started Revelation 20 is that, uh, so in Revelation 19, the, the beast which is the Antichrist and the false prophets, they shall be thrown into the lake of fire. But the dragon is going to be thrown into the abyss and then bound for 1,000 years. And then you'll be released to tempt those nations that are going to try to 
to fight against God's people. And then after that, that's when he's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. So I just realized that, like, I think it's very interesting to note there that the devil doesn't get thrown into the lake of fire immediately as the, the beast and the false prophet, but he'll be thrown after the millennial rule. Okay. Thank you, Tonde. There's something that you said there that is not right. Uh, what did I say? Um, that you'll be thrown into the bottomless pit after the millennial. No, 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 no. I said, I said after the, the, the millennial, I mean, that's when, when he comes out to, um, like when he gets released for a short oh, time. Yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's when you'll be thrown into the lake of fire. Because first it goes to okay. abyss, abyss, and then, yeah. Okay, good. You got it. All right. Who else has a comment? A revelation? Who understood what we are learning here? Who is confused? Not I am yet. a little bit confused. Yeah, because you came today, Theo. You can make it and tell you need to go back and <laughs> even uh, ask Tony to give you uh, the previous teachings and show you where they are. You can go on the forum and find all the other ones. Mm -hmm. They are on our church forum there, but you can also get some from Tony. Uh, that's <clears throat> chapter one of Revelations to make sense in the end of where we're coming from and going. Otherwise, uh, you confuse confused. Yeah. Pastor, Theo won't be able to see on the forum because he joined. I added him a couple of days ago, so you need to oh, go to Tonde. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can talk to Tonde. Tonde can. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I we had already talked uh, with Theo like uh, later on when he was asking that question. I told him I can send him all the other teachings. So we're... yeah, okay. yeah, sure. So don't be confused, Theo. They will help you out. Okay. Yeah, honestly, even if I was kind of confused, I had uh, I got enough knowledge to know that wow, God is really amazing, mm -hmm. and the future is gonna get really dark, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really shows you that we are not just praying to get breakthrough of cars and houses. There's more to be a Christian. It's not about getting this blessing cars and houses, husbands and wives, and, you know, getting aeroplanes. That's not what Christianity is all about. Mm -hmm. This is what it is all about. We need to know that at the end of this life, whether you die before Christ comes or you wait for Christ to come, you need to live a righteous life so that you'll be raptured when others are going when Christ come to collect the righteous, you need to be righteous. That must be focus for every believer. Your focus is, I need to live a righteous life. That pleases God. So that this there is life after all this. There's going to be a life. There's going to be more life. Permanent, eternal. Pipi, did you hear that? Pipi? Uh, there's going to be eternal life after all this. Amen? So there is more to life than this. That's why we must really give our hearts to Christ. It's not about just getting breakthroughs, getting money, getting mansions, getting aeroplanes. That's not what Christianity is all about. This is what it is all about the end result what is life going to be like if i die today how assured am i that the struggles that i've done wasting money giving my money to church wasting money coming to church every sunday wasting money wasting time not studying not enjoying the good things that others are enjoying and i don't enjoy them why am i putting myself through all this that Others are drinking, I'm not drinking. Others are smoking, I'm not smoking. Why am I not doing this? Why am I punishing myself? This is it. That at the end of life, there's going to be eternal life. And those who did not walk right, they are going to be thrown into the pit of fire. This 
uh, Gehenna, hell, pit of fire, lake of fire, was not created for human beings. It was created for the devil and his angels and these false prophets. But because people, they refuse to follow the ways of God, they are going to join him. They are going to join him in the lake of fire. So don't let people tell you there's no hell. There is hell. <laughs> and people shall burn in hell forever. And if we walk right before God, we shall inherit eternal life. We shall rule with Christ Jesus. Now you are hearing, how are we going to rule? Those questions, Piola, you used to ask, uh, how are we going to be ruling? That's how now we are going to be ruling. With Christ, the lions are not going, they are going to be harmless. The earth is going to be restored. There's going to be everything available. Back to Eden, we'll be back in Eden. What it was like in Eden, we'll be back in Eden. So this is what we in our life. That's what we are striving for. Any other question? Fari, are you there today? Been very quiet. Any other comment, question? I have a question, Pastor. Oh, um, oh sorry for somebody going to speak. I have a question, Pastor. Um, you mentioned that in this um, golden age, this new millennium, you said there will be wheat, <coughs> there will be leaves that people can um, eat or you know use to heal, but Shouldn't there no, be no need for healing if now we're um, living with Christ and we're in this golden age? Why would they need healing if we're not going to see deal, have sickness anymore? Well, I wouldn't know what the healing for people is. Whether it's going to be a one-time thing or uh, I don't know what the leaves of the trees shall provide healing for the people uh, of the millennium. Oh, by the way, a thousand years will not have, um, the devils shall be released again. So there'll still be some sickness. There'll still be some sickness. But after the millennium, after, because the healing, if you remember, the healing, uh, the leaves of the trees, uh, shall provide, which shall provide healing for the people of the millennium is in Ezekiel 47, verse 40, uh, I think verse 7 and 12. But the millennium, millennium, the golden age of peace as nations shall turn their swords is uh, after that. You find that it's now in advance in Ezekiel um, uh, 34 and 47. Uh, when this millennium, the, the, the ruling, uh, the dominion, the kingdoms have been divided and people have been rewarded. Finally, the final, final, because even right now, we are not finally, finally on what it shall be like after life. Did you get that? So yeah. during the millennium, we still have um, we still have time where the devil is going to be released again. Don't forget that we are not yet in that final, final of what shall happen. Uh, that's what we're gonna get in twenty one and twenty two. So we are yet, we are yet to see more happening. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I have a comment, Pastor. Yes, go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. You, you mentioned already what I wanted to say, mm -hmm. that we gave our lives to Christ because we wanted to make heaven. That was my purpose of giving my life to Christ. That was my main, main reason. I didn't give my life to Christ because of anything else. But one day I had a dream. I was I was preaching to somebody that what you are doing is not good. You have to repent. Mm -hmm. Because if you leave this war, you're going to go to hellfire. He laughed at me. They like, ha, ha, ha. I don't care. Mm -hmm. You you, pastor, you people have been preaching. Pastor, have been, I, I've heard this so many times. When we're there, Jesus Christ come back and, and when, 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 am I, when, is, when is the day? We have been hearing all those nonsense every day, every day. So when I woke up in that dream, I was worried. At least how human being is wicked. They have been hearing the word, hearing men preach, they listen to people. They say, they say I don't care. I'm not repenting. Every day people preach about hell, hell, hell. When, when? Days are passing, it has never come. So when I got up in that dream, I was very, very worried. How, how man is wicked. 
Yeah, because people do not, um, they think all these things we're talking about, we, we are crazy. <laughs> That's why people, they take for granted when we are preaching, they take it for granted because they think, oh, I got a promotion at my workplace and I'm still a sinner. You know, I still do my stuff. You know, I heard the other day someone telling someone, saying, you know, just pray, God will give you that thing. You don't have to be a, a, a Christian or a holy person to get it. Just don't. I'm like, oh, sad. Because people don't know. They think we are here to pray for these blessings. These blessings, we are not even supposed to pray for them. They are supposed to naturally be part of our lifestyle. That's why the Bible says all these things, just seek the kingdom. Everything else will be added unto you. You see, so it's not about um, the blessings, uh, breakthroughs. Yeah, we love them, but listen, that's not the reason why you are a Christian. That is not the reason why you are a Christian. There is more to that. There is more. We want to make it at the last day. As a believer, you have to have a relationship with Christ. Okay, I think today we have exhausted. I want to thank all of you for being here. God bless you. Thank you so much. And I believe that what we have learned today, we will really keep it inside of our hearts and we will experiment with it to see that we are getting ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And we really want to be part of that um, team that will come back on earth with Christ Jesus, dead or alive, I still want to be part of those who are going to come back on earth. I don't want to miss rapture. When you live here, that should be your goal. I don't want to miss rapture. Mm -mm. I don't want to miss rapture because what comes after rapture is hard. For you to make it is grace. I don't know because, because the grace won't be there then. You have to enter through your own blood. It's going to be hard. All these tribulations you're talking about, you're going to be part of it. But, you know, I encourage all of you that let's all try and make it so that when he returns, we will be part of this. Amen. Amen. Mrs. Manjengwa, do you want to close us with a word of prayer?